hi everyone. Um, I'm Tian Chi Chen, so I'm not from Amazon, uh, <laughs> but I'm one of the MX key contributors, and um, we work closely with all the communities to bring interesting stuff. So uh, I w I'm going to talk about a recent stack that's pretty related to what we are doing and what we care about. It's called TVM stack. It's a project in started from University of Washington, but it's now a community project, including contributors from Amazon, from other companies, and from the MX community as well. And uh, so you will see what it is. So one of the uh, problems that people are always interested in is like, you know, what about new hardware and how you can support uh, different kind of new hardware on different stack. And that's of course one of the things that that we like to do, or I, I like to do in person. And uh, actually, in University of Washington, there's a strong hardware group, and I collab with some of them to work on the brand new accelerators. And it's an interesting experience on you know how you how you try to build things and bring those accelerators to to life. So this is Terry, my collaborator. He works on design new accelerators for 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 deep learning. Um, so, but but he faced a problem in a sense that you know he need to graduate. And uh, the problem is that the, 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 in order for him to graduate, he would really want to build a, this accelerator, publish a nice paper. But you know, uh, if the story ends there, what's the sense of building an accelerator? Because you know, it's only sitting a paper that maybe your simulator runs it. So what he really wants is he wants you know, all those nice frameworks can run on top of his accelerator. The problem is that in order for him to do that, uh, there's a lot of things that he have to do that go beyond building the hardware design itself. Specifically, he have to build an entire software stack on top of it. Because the, the problem is that you know, for each type of new hardware, though there are non-standard optimizations and non-standard support for all those different hardware uh, primitives and so on, in a sense that you, know, you really need to, in order for you to, to actually build accelerator and get it used by a user, actually run Python code on top of it. It's kind of very non-trivial, and what's happening before is that you know you have to sit there handcrafting assembly code that nobody understands, and you know somehow you'll be able to run MNIST on on top of your accelerator, which is not so exciting. So this is not only a problem for theory as well; it's a problem that everybody is facing. Maybe big companies will have more engineering power that can put, like Google, can put like dedicated team to optimize for TPU and so on. Uh, small companies, startups, different uh, group research groups in in a university that are very talented that they can come up with new hardware designs that are even more novel and better than what, what's already out there. But the problem they are facing is that they still need to rebuild the entire software stack. And this is not only a problem for accelerators, as you can find, you know, traditional deep learning software are built on top of CPUs and NVIDIA GPUs, and that's all, and that's uh, what we can bestly do so far. But there are also problems of supporting, say, things like mobile phones, AMD GPUs, uh, embedded devices like Raspberry Pi, uh, FPGAs, and of course, like uh, Google's TPU-like uh, custom accelerators. So what we can do, and how we can solve this problem? So that's one of the questions that we have been asking in the past year, and that's the work that we've been, that we have been doing the past one and a half years uh, on this TVM stack. So the general idea is that we want to try to build a bridge that bridges this front-end user-defined framework like MXNet and other frameworks, and try to have a way to lower those programs kind of automatically or semi-automatically on the hardware that we want to support. And it's, actually, we are not alone in a sense that you know this is a problem that we always want to look at. So, what are the possible solutions that you can use to solve this problem? One of the uh, one of the typical approach that, that most of the frameworks that take so far is what we call computational graph optimization. So, the idea is that you can represent your high-level computations in this kind of computational graph, which have things like you know you can have uh, uh, nodes, you can have uh, operator nodes that represents the convolution that you want to perform. And somehow we can build effective graph transformations or equipment transformations that transform this graph program. And that's an approach used by, say, uh, TensorFlow's XRA compiler. And uh, recently, Intel have a toolkit called the Intel Nirvana Graph that does that. Uh, this, is, this is great in a sense that community graph gives you a lot of high-level optimization chance. But what we find is that uh, even with computational graph optimization, you still have a huge gap uh, actually between the computational graph node and Howard. The reason is that if you look at the computational graph node, say a convolution node, it only tells though this is the convolution. 
But if you look at the possible choices you can make on a low level hardware, there are different choices even for a single GPU. For example, if you have ever programmed CUDA, you can do different threadings, you can use shared memory. Uh, uh, Dick mentioned like you know you can do things like mixed precision, and there are quite a lot of choices that are not exposed in the computational graph pattern. So what we want instead is we want to have a lower level uh, of a lower level representation that can give us this kind of expressivity and being able to kind of automatically lower those programs on those towers. So we choose this second level of representation, which we call tensor expression language that allows you to basically describe the mathematical formula on how you want to compute your computation. For example, this is an example on how you can compute dot product or matrix multiplication. Actually, it's a transpose matrix multiplication to be, to be precise. And in order to bridge the, the gap between this tensor expression language to hardware, we adopt an uh, existing uh, concept from programming language called schedule optimization that allows you to transform those programs, high-level programs, to different specific hardware backends. So uh, we are talking about accelerators. So when you talk, uh, let me tell you one specific challenge actually we face that are not exist in existing uh, existing CPU and GPU optimization. Actually, it, it exists in Volta because Volta is kind of one of a special accelerator. It's called tensorization challenge. So if you're familiar with the uh, with the traditional CPU program, you will find that. You program CPU in a form of scalar program. So you can specify, I want to multiply this number by this number and store that to, to my target. And if you, if, you, if you use like modern CPUs, they are like powerful CMD unit, which means that you can no longer, like you can take benefit of vector instructions. And you can say that I can, I can load my uh, four floating point into this uh, CMD vector. I load another four floating point and do like a uh, element-wise add of this floating point. It's called uh, vector optimization or vectorization. And if you look at the recent introduced uh, uh, accelerators, the basic primitives kind of, uh, kind of change from the traditional vector instruction to the basically higher, higher order instruction like matrix vector, dot product, uh, high dimensional convolutions, or matrix matrix convolutions. And the challenge here is that we really want to be able to kind of uh, utilize those hardware primitives or what we call tensorize your program so that you can basically, you can decompose your program into basic unit that consists of those uh, tensor instructions. Uh, but we don't want to restrict actually uh, the possible tensor instruction that you can use because different accelerators can have different choices of you know, what is the basic tensor primitive that they choose. So we, what we do is that we allow the hardware designer to actually declare their hardware tensor interface in the same ex uh, tensor expression language of the TVM stack. And you can use it, uh, this transformation called tensorized transformation that transform your program to utilize this. And this is one of the major challenge that we solve in order to actually allow user to program the accelerator from Python, and which is pretty, pretty cool in my opinion. There are more hardware challenges that you will face if you're shifting from the traditional hardware to accelerators. Uh, we have talked about the compute primitive challenge. There are also challenges in things like memory subsystem. So in traditional CPUs, the caches are automatically managed for you. But if you're shifting to GPUs, you need to kind of manually manage your shared memory. But if you, if you look at accelerators, you kind of have explicitly managed everything in a sense that you know, uh, I may have a special memory for my weight and a special memory for my input, and I can only do matrix vector product from my weight memory, uh, from an element in my weight memory to the vector in my, in my activation memory. So we need primitives that especially optimize for those like uh, explicit memory hierarchy. And of course, there's like different choice of data types. We have saying FP32, uh, FP16, which is talking about here for inference, int8 is pretty good. And there's also a question like, can we use lower number of bits if you have like customized accelerators? So uh, in summary, we have a rich class of schedule optimizations that we do. We adopt useful schedule primitives from existing works uh, like uh, Hila and Loopy. And we introduce new primitives for accelerators and, and GPUs. And, to, so that we can directly bring this end-to-end -end stack that uh, compiles high-level programs into different hardware. Um, from the user's perspective, it's actually pretty straightforward in a sense that you can directly take a MaxNet, a MaxNet model, for example, uh, call a NVM compiler.build, and it will give you a 
deployable module that you can deploy on the hardware backends that TVM, TVM stack support. So far on the backend, we support uh, things like you know Android, uh, Raspberry Pi. It even runs on your browser because we have a JavaScript backend that uh, actually runs WebGL. And uh, um, so far, uh, TVM st stack support all the major GPU in GPU libraries, uh, GPU vendor uh, specific uh, programming model, which includes CUDA. Metro for Apple GPUs, OpenCL if you run on some Android devices, and Vulkan if you want to run all the most recent GPUs. It also lowers to general CPU backends and, and accelerator backends.